Hey there, everybody. I get a lot of questions about setups and rigs uh, for the different situations that I fly fish in. So this is a second video in a series about my setups and rigs. This one will be on my dry fly and mostly on my dry dropper rigs that I use when I'm out fishing in the wilds here in Alberta. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. If you are interested in uh, purchasing any of the equipment that I use, I've got links down below uh, in the description for this video. You can click on them. It'll take you to the uh, eBay stores where I purchase a lot of that stuff. And of course, if you purchase some of those, it's greatly appreciated because I earn a small commission on all of those sales. So if you're interested in that, that'd be great and I would sure appreciate it. So uh, without further ado, on to the different rigs that I use. First up is my small stream rod and reel. So my setup for small stream dry fly or dry dropper fishing. My rod is a very cheap eagle claw, six foot six, two piece, three, four weight rod. Uh, really like it in the, in the small spaces because you know it's not very long so I don't catch it on things. Uh, it seems to load really quickly which is a nice advantage uh, in usually tight spaces and I leave it, at, I leave it assembled and walk through the bush. Uh, it's a lot more durable than a graphite rod which can catch on something and snap off a little more easily. Uh, fiberglass doesn't seem to do that. It's a nice lightweight rod, feels good to cast uh, and just works great in those tight spaces. Next up, you can see the reel that I use with my Eagle Claw. Uh, again, it's nothing special. It's just a eBay rod that I, or eBay reel, sorry, that I purchased. And uh, it's cheap, it works great. It's not like you're fighting huge fish where you need a ton of line or backing. Uh, and uh, there's a link in the description to that if you're interested in just getting a, a cheap reel that works really good and is quite durable. Uh, this one I've had for, oh, probably now five years. Hasn't failed me yet. Um, and you can see also above there that I've got a rod tube that I've built. I built uh, these for most of my rods, just uh, made out of PVC pipe, and I kind of stain it with the uh, shoe polish to make it look like wood. Next up is my kind of tried and true dry fly rod. It's the most expensive rod I own. Uh, that said, it's still uh, pretty cheap in the grand scheme. Uh, there you can usually get these for uh, well under $200. Uh, it is my Temple Fork Outfitters Professional Series 2. It's a five weight. It's eight and a half feet long. Um, it has a great feel. Like, I mean, it's just a great stick to, to cast with. It's, it's smooth. It's lightweight. Uh, it's got great action. It's really accurate. Um, it's predictable. Uh, so it, it's a really nice rod. I really like it. Uh, the nice thing about them is they do come with a lifetime warranty. Anytime you snap one, slam it in the car door, whatever, uh, it only costs you $30 to replace a broken section. So it's way cheaper than buying the whole new rod, uh, which is a nice feature. The reel I use on that rod is just another eBay special, um, $12.00. On, on eBay. I think there are a little bit more now, but um, still a very affordable reel. Uh, takes a licking, keeps on ticking. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not terribly gentle with it, so um, it still works well. It's got a cork disc drag, three seasons. It still works. I have zero issues with it. It has uh, you know, a great, great feel when you've got a big fish on and it's pulling. Uh, it seems to let the line go really easily, uh, but is nice and adjustable, so it doesn't catch. Um, just a great all-around, uh, a very affordable reel. Uh, there's a link in the description if you're interested in those. I really can't say enough good stuff about this rod. It is by far my favorite rod. Um, it's well designed and you kind of see the advantage of having a, a little higher price point. Uh, one of the nicest things I like about it is it does have the alignment dots for when you're assembling the rod. You know you have it uh, lined up correctly and all the uh, um, all the eyes are going to match up so your line will pass through them easily. So another kind of perk of the temple fork rod. And now we come to the different rigs that I use with these two rods. The first is my dry dropper rig for uh, slow and shallow situations. So I've got you know slow water that's also not very deep. Um, so in that situation, I use, uh, again, a, a buoyant foam body dry fly, a Miracle Caddis, a foam stimulator, or a Quilimoto, something like that that's you know very buoyant. Uh, and then below that, about 12 inches in length, again, this, we're dealing with shallow water here, um, I've got just some tippet there and connected to the uh, bend of the hook with a clinch knot. And below that, I've got um, a size 14 to 18 unweighted nymph. The weight is not that important in this situation because, again, we're dealing with slow and shallow water. It doesn't need to sink very far or very fast. So the advantage of that is you can use smaller dry flies because you're not having to support a lot of weight. 
My next dry dropper rig is my dry dropper slash emerger rig. I use this in the situation we've probably all encountered where you got fish coming up, they're rising, but at the last minute they're bumping your fly or they're refusing your fly. Uh, you know, you, they're, they're rising, it's very frustrating and you're sure they're taking stuff, but you can't see anything on the surface. So they're likely taking emergers, which are just under the surface. So what I'll do is I'll have my uh, dry fly, can be large or small, uh, buoyancy is not as big because it's not holding up a nymph that's sunk, uh, about 18 inches, maybe a little more than that probably maybe 18 inches to two feet of tippet tied behind that again with a clinch knot on the main fly uh, I will have an emerger of some kind maybe a mirror you know a caddis emerger or a holy grail uh, caddis uh, in this case I've got my quill body emerger um, on this rig I have that in behind and then that gives the fish a second option if they're coming up and having a look uh, maybe they'll take the emerger because it seems a little more vulnerable Next up is my dry dropper rig for fast and shallow situations, so like small stream kind of riffles. Um, obviously, with the faster water, this is where nymphs are being pulled off of the rocks, so they're kind of rolling around uh, a lot in those situations. So again, I have a dry fly, can be pretty large, foam is best. Uh, then I have about a 12-inch um, length of 5x tippet tied to the uh, bend of the hook with a clinch knot, and then attached to that, I have a very small, usually like size 16, size 18 unweighted nymph below that because again we're dealing with small water it's fast it's riffly um, so we don't have to worry too much about depth and sinking and things like that so I typically use something small small stream fish are always very aggressive when they see a small nymph hanging down below lastly is my slow deep pool dry dropper system so that situation where you know you've got the drop off and you get this really deep pool that's quite slow on the top uh, so in that situation I'll use a very large um, main dry fly so size 6 to 10 either it's a stimmy or it's a hopper okay something like that that's very big and very obvious um, I'll have attached to that 4x or 5x tippet more than two feet worth because obviously we're dealing with a you know a deep area here sometimes even more than that although it can get tricky to cast with longer dry with a longer dropper um, attached to that again to the bend of the hook with a clinch knot um, I will have the um, size 14 to 16 bead head weighted nymph. Uh, the one you see here is my um, kind of two body uh, blue wing olive nymph. Um, but again, it's got to be something heavy. It's got to get down. It's got to be hanging well below the main dry fly because we're dealing with a slow, deep pool situation. Thanks everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, hopefully we'll be getting out fishing here soon. I'm kind of getting tired of making videos that don't have fishing in them. So I'm looking forward to getting out and, and actually doing some fishing and having some uh, exciting videos to share with you. Uh, again, if you're interested in any of the equipment I use, there's links in the description. Uh, any purchase there does benefit me slightly. So I certainly appreciate that. Uh, and I appreciate all your reviews and subscriptions and comments. So you got comments or questions, feel free to fire away. I uh, always appreciate and enjoy answering and uh, answering those questions and chatting with everybody remember you can also follow me on instagram facebook and twitter at midlife flysis uh, if you're into those social media outlets uh, i definitely use those as well so i hope everybody has a great summer of fly fishing and we'll hope to chat with you soon see you later tight lines